So, finally, my voice is here. Um, welcome to my stream. Today we make uh, something completely different. Um, today we will um, have a look at an ongoing battle between two players of DCZ. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy this uh, stream of, of uh, that battle, which we, which we play out in DCS itself. Okay, I, I wanted to show you a little bit what's going on here and uh, how the battle is uh, set up currently. Um, the battle is um, fought between the player Spartan and Jurgon. Uh, Spartan is attacking from the conflict zone Obsidian Lightning to the conflict zone Green Mainframe. That is the reason why the pawn of him is uh, currently here inside the location of Green Mainframe. And um, what I can what I can show you is um, yeah, which pawns additionally are involved in the, from from um, Spartan side. And I will show you how uh, the uh, DCZ application has uh, generated the different missions so that um, the players got the opportunity to plan their battle. So uh, Spartan, as I said, has uh, moved this pawn into uh, this uh, conflict zone with 72 troops and 36 ground forces of uh, what kind ever and additionally activated uh, this pawn in Obsidian Lightning and these two ones in Desert Mainframe and I think, yeah, in Covert Cold and Uncounted Pony, these pawns. Pawns which are not ground forces or which uh, has not been um, drawn into this conflict zone can only be activated if it contains uh, Sam, radar, EWR, or um, aircrafts. So only these kind of things get activated if you activate a pawn outside of the current conflict. So um, this pawn with uh, two ground forces is probably a pawn with ha which has um, AAA inside it. And if you now uh, click the battle button, you get a list of all the units you uh, have activated for this conflict. So you see uh, Spartan is attacking with quite some um, units, much um, um, anti-air, Jagdpanzer, Panther, G, Tiger 2, Blitz to transport the soldiers into the conflict zone. His research uh, got him even the MiG-15, so he uh, um, constructed some MiG-15 and uh, brought them into the battle too. And what he then could do was uh, to get his um, um, the so-called first sequence uh, mission file where he can plan his battle. So I will show you that now. So let me switch to DCS. What he gets was that file where all the units participating in that conflict are shown and additionally uh, the border of the zones where these units can be placed are given. So he made his uh, plan and the plan uh, brought him to, I think it was, yeah, to this one. So he placed all the units, he gave uh, certain aircrafts even some loadout. Okay, that is a <laughs> bad example, I see. Maybe this one, let's see. Yeah, in, in in uh, that case, uh, the 109 got uh, some additional fuel. 
And he, as I said, he uploaded his plan with the initial waypoints and where the ground forces are pla placed. But inside uh, the given zone, he may place the forces. So he placed uh, quite some forces in the near of uh, the uh, borderline to the zone he is currently attacking. And as an attacker, um, he has to try to get his troops into the zone to capture the conflict zone. At the end of the conflict, which is uh, two hours um, at most, uh, DCZ determines uh, which side has the most troops into the zone and the conflict zone is uh, going over to the guy who had the most troops in the DCS zones. And DCZ generates five DCS zones randomly inside the conflict zone where he, where both sides have to drop his or her troops. And after the upload and after uh, Jürgen has uploaded his mission, the final battle uh, resulted. And this uh, file only has all the units, the zones, and all the waypoints which was placed by the player. So you can see even Jürgen has activated some pawns which were far away, some aircraft here from, you know, from Vasiani, for example. Okay, and uh, both players uh, got uh, one human pilot which tried to bring more dynamic into the battle than the, well, typical AI. So yeah, let's let's start that mission. Um, switching to creating a server.
so yeah right now the the players of the game are slotting to the appropriate slots So we are still waiting for one guy. Ah, okay, he's coming. <laughs> if everything is fine right okay um everyone has slotted in and has already loaded its cockpit yeah can, can you start it please i can kill michael Pax. thanks <laughs> so cockpit <laughs> cockpit is loaded i see i see okay i switch to the defender and uh, if, if, if everything is fine i will start the game sounds good okay jeder is eingeslotted and can schon sein cockpit sehen mm -hmm. yes <laughs> Krips, Krips hat nur Furz trocken gesagt. Uh, can you please uh, activate the game so I can kill Microfax? K sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, viel Erfolg. Schange dünn. Good luck. Besten Dank. So I switch uh, to the F10 map and activate the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are the uh zones which have should which have to be captured and it's generated by the mission that is the reason why mission data is, is given there so you literally can see um where where they have to get their troops on both sides What also uh, happens is I'm I'm currently slotted in, in as a game master, but on the uh, red coalition side. So um, if I go to um, outside view and press uh, sharp, you can see I can see the loading options to load troops uh, from the side of Spartan. And here in F1. Um, You can check um, how many troops are already in, inside the zone and you can uh, declare the end of the game and if both players do so before the two hours um, were already um, up, then yeah, the game will also end and determine the outcome. So because uh, the whole thing is uh, linked with the uh, actual DCZ board game, um it's probably not only um or it's probably not the best um strategy to get your troops in every battle into the zones but maybe it's even a better strategy to just uh well havoc on the enemy side to kill as much um units on the other side or destroy buildings and such things 
to yeah cripple the enemy instead of capture his zone so that is always of course an, an, an option and if you are do so every unit which gets killed in that dcs game will be erased from the dcz uh, risk like board from the boarding game okay let's uh let's switch back to the f10 map and have a look what's currently going on i think uh currently the ai units and the player units are preparing to start and as one can see uh the ai units have started their machine very quickly while the player unit or the player control unit uh, still has to go th through the whole uh, checkup. So in this case, uh, the player behind uh, the player pilot behind that machine uh, hasn't started its engine yet. So let's see on the other side. The same here. Uh, many of the AI units are already taxing or even starting. And I have to find the player con yeah, there's the from a player controlled. Wait! On the blue side the player has already started its engine at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> greetings, Lady Go. And yes, yes. Uh, I mean, it's not only the accent. Um, I know that my English is not good. So I try my best to explain everything and um, to show what's going on in English as good as I can. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's extreme sometimes. I don't know um, if you have already watched uh, from the beginning. In the beginning, I showed um, what um, what actually is happening in the DCZ board game, the risk-like board game, and why this battle is happening and uh, how it was generated and how both sides could plan their their attack or their defending, uh, their defend. And yes, we are now playing in DCS that one battle for DCZ out. Okay. More machines are starting on both sides. Uh, the defender tanks standing near buildings which were um, built in, inside DCZ to protect them. Uh, the defender, of course, has already put some soldiers in the vicinity of uh, DCS zones, which have to be captured while the red player is on his engagement now. You really can see that. Yeah. Okay. So again, we have um, two tactical commanders the actual gamer or player of uh, DCZ, uh, Spartan is red side because he is uh, the attacker of a conflict zone and Jürgen is uh, blue side because he is a defender of a conflict zone. And we have also two volunteer pilots for both the attacker and the defender. Um, let me go. Um, the infantry can be controlled in this game from the combined arms strategy perspective. You can give them commands to move. That is possible. That at some point there will come something like a first person thing. I, I doubt that because uh, the infantry is really, really, really uh, simplistic implemented. And yeah, yeah, something like armor. I, I already. 
uh, I already suspected that you meant this. And um, I mean, in this simulation, so many things are simulated. Um, I doubt it that um, you will give uh, you will get something like armor inside of DCS in <laughs> for the current computer power and the current situation and what all has to be done to to get something like that. I mean, you can see in armor you have decent infantry uh, simulation, but if it comes to planes, it really gets extremely simplistic. So you have to choose. I, it's either this or that. So we have now some planes getting close to the um, to the tanks of the attacker, but that is already at the border of the attacking zone. So um, Spartan literally placed some anti-air there. And you can see how the flak is shooting the P-51. While the AI P-51 is now preparing to attack with its rockets. And there he is shooting. Oh, yeah. I would say Spartan lost some units there already. Ah, actually it was a, it was a flak there. Okay. Interesting. Um, let me go. I would rather think that uh, the third party devs or Eagle Dynamics get tempted to make something like a tank simulation, a DCS tank simulation, but even that is. <laughs> there's so many things in DCS uh, missing to get a proper and decent tank simulation done. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, and there got a flag 30 and P-51. So the air battle has already begun somewhat. Let's see um, how the um, player pilots are doing. Have to find him. <laughs> These are all AI. Where is he? Oh, interesting. A study sim for for the for, for Sherman. I would I would buy that. I would find it. Oh, Crips has finally started from some, there. He is. Yeah, there we see one of the player pilots starting, and he has he has one of the P51s uh, which carries um, rockets. Yeah, I know, and you will literally see that the Sherman has many problems to fight a tiger tank. You will see that in this conflict probably, for sure. Exactly, the HVRs are equipped on the P-51 and uh, one of the AI P-51 equipped with, with that uh, rockets already destroyed some flak. So let me, um, let me fine tune here the the audio a little bit. It's a little bit loud. If you watch planes. Okay, that is Crips. And. Okay, I think Microfax hasn't started yet. And from the red side, not so many um, fighters came close yet. So there's still quite a distance to get into the air battle. Yeah, 90 kilometers, that's uh, 
for uh, w, uh, WW2 and for the first gen MiG 15 fighters, it's quite a distance for sure. Hmm, it looks a little bit like uh, Microvex has some problems here. I don't know. But he hasn't started yet, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so let's see what's going on. Or maybe he takes it to the end so he can start in the direction uh, where he has to go. That's probably the case. Okay, that AI unit has already shot most of its of its uh, HVARS and it gets quite some attention from the flak down below that we hear the, uh, the flak explosions in the in the air. Ooh. Yeah, um, uh, exactly. Uh, Lenny Go just uh, said, interesting, a focker wolf in a scenario where sabers exist. Um, both players uh, already researched in the aircraft research lane uh, so far that they were able to build MiG-15s and uh, F-86. So we have MiG-15s for the uh, uh, German-Russian tech side and uh, we have uh, F-86 on the, um, on the Allied or NATO side. And because they just uh, researched it, they don't have so many F-86 and MiG-15, but some. Oh, Microvex has started now. Okay. Okay, I see uh, on the red side the player is equipped with a bomb, if I see it correctly. I'm certainly not an expert for uh, WW2 stuff, but yeah, very interesting. But he has still quite a distance to fly to come into the actual battle. So again, um, these... One, two, three, four, five zones are the zones uh, which has to be captured by troops as many as possible. And at the end of the game, uh, we started at uh, nine o'clock and the game will end two hours later. So it, the game will end at 11 o'clock. And then uh, DCZ inside of DCS is counting the amount of troops in all zones for both coalitions and that determines in which hand the conflict zone will fall. Yeah, I think too uh, that, that it's uh, a 250 or 500 kilogram bomb. <laughs> Interceptor bombers, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. So the P-51 with rockets are still attacking the tanks which try to come close to the main battle or to the um, to the um, actual battlefield where the zones are and uh, where the conflict zone itself is. And even they are AI uh, units, they do some damage to the ground forces. 
but let's look how um, one of the human pilots is doing currently, on, which is from the Defender. I only have to find him again. Oh, yeah, already have MiG-15 in the battle. I don't know if uh, Spartan has, has seen this. And the F-86 are already on it. How? I can't find... Let's, let's uh, turn on the names. Maybe then I can find him better. Ah, Crips is patrolling the northern edge. I see, okay. Oh, there are 109s close to a Bofors. And currently diving, I don't know if they're trying to attack them. Yeah, um, Microvax knows a lot of uh, WW2 as well, and uh, he already told me that there was an obses obsession to putting bombs on all planes. So, like, uh, if you can intercept uh, aircrafts on the way, you can still destroy something. So get the get the bomb onto uh, under anything. Oh, and they are actually destroying some of the F-86 with uh, HVRR rockets, some Tiger twos. Okay, they just fly by. Good. Let's see. More MiG-15s are coming close. And here... But most of the, of the group of the tanks are still somewhat active. Oh, I think there has something happened which shouldn't happen again. Ah. Ah, yeah. That, that is uh, the the problem mostly in uh, DCS depends of course of the um, given waypoints but um, they can get quite stuck so one uh, had problems to come over the bridge and some hold, halted be because of that and now everyone trying to get over the bridge has potentially a problem yeah, that is definitely a DCS thing, and I hope that gets more and more fixed in the future. So that is, of course, a problem for DCZ as well, because uh, all of that um, ground forces which have to come to a certain point, so you can hopefully get your troops in into the zones without getting them killed too quickly. Okay, I think some of the AI MiG-15s are engaging the F-86 right now. <laughs> More or less successfully, probably less successfully. <laughs> A typical uh, way of behavior from the AI units is currently to, to make loops. And that is not the best maneuver to do so all the day or all the time. Here we have uh, one of the human pilot. Hey, uh, Fox of Hope. Greetings and welcome to my stream. Um, actually, uh, that is not possible. Um, the internal tester team is uh, present at, at the start of the battle and the dynamic link library I have um, programmed needs everyone in place before the battle is starting. So no one can join in between. That is not possible. I'm sorry.
it actually that is an an heavy organized and orchestrated um, internal test. So. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Very nice. Um, if we need more pilots for testing or we need more players, I will uh, announce that on the uh, appropriate thread, for sure. So unfortunately, some units got stuck on the bridges. Yeah, that that is of course not so nice for for Spartan. But some are still underway, and I hope they will make it over the next bridge. There's one or two units which already got somewhat damaged, and now <laughs> interesting. So let's see where the red pilot player is currently. Oh, he's still on the, on the way. So yeah, it's, it's quite a distance from my cop to the battlefield, for sure. Yeah, that's that's probably the case. Um, many things in um, DCZ is still very, very, very early. It's it's pre-alpha, so um, I have not implemented um, the code necessary to give or to let's say um, give the the planner from from both sides uh, the option to choose a camel, so that the chosen camel gets into the final battle. So it it certainly will have uh, much of non-fitting in this environment. I see more harassment from from the F-86 and P-51 to the troops, which currently carries uh, some of the soldiers, which uh, Spartan is trying to get into the zones. Really? A 109 just shot an F-86 with his, with his uh, machine guns. <laughs> Interesting. So, more and more battle is happening here. And still some... Some engagement to the ground is happening as well. Let's see. Ah, there comes the late MiG-15, which I think started from Anapa. And still some 109 and 190 are under its way. Oh, and uh, Microvax comes now close with his 190. And uh, Crips is in his P-51 close, so... That will probably get interesting. Yeah, there you can see in the distance the dot. He hasn't noticed it yet. Okay. 
<laughs> more F86s are shot down by 109s. It's, it's quite interesting. I mean, uh, the F86 tried to hunt the MiG-15 and the 109s are behind them. Um, actually, in my opinion, they're both aces. Microvax is pretty good, Crips is pretty good. And I'm glad that they are helping me uh, to test uh, the DCS battles generated by DCZ from the pilot perspective, for sure. But if you meant the AI shooting uh, F86, yeah, that's... <laughs> A 109 shooting F-86 is, is funny somehow. Stupid AI. Interesting how, how he easily... How one AI easily shoots into the F-86 AI. <laughs> no, he's not destroyed yet, but it's... Ah. If both were uh, player pilots, uh, then that would probably not happen in, in, in this kind. I mean, the F-86 uh, is somewhat slow. <laughs> to be a German engineering, yeah, probably. And again! And again, it happened again, yeah. Okay. Let's see. There we have Microvex and Crips. And I see one is already hunting the other one. So a battle between two pi player pilots is probably a little bit more interesting uh, for the stream than everything else going on, more or less. But yeah, um, this not so good um, AI both have to uh, to handle that. And the attacker has currently a little bit of an um, disadvancement, which the defender has not. Uh, try to get over all these bridges and streets um, with AI which gets sometimes stuck at bridges and such things. So I think um, Microvex tries to outrun a little bit the, the P-51 even with a bomb, so he gets the bomb properly used, gets something destroyed before he engages in, into the battle. But Crips in his P-51 is closing. Yeah, he comes closer and closer. And currently they are at a pretty high height. 5,000 meters already, almost. So yeah, he overflies uh, problemless all the AAA. But I doubt that he will reach the tanks of the Defender before Crips reaches him. Ah, and um, a MiG-15 has just shot an F-86. So AI is still battling on, on other places. Let's deactivate. Yeah. Okay, now he comes really close. There he is. I think he noticed him now. Probably, maybe. Made such a sudden turn, but now he's no longer. Ah, he's coming for you. Oh, 
that's it. Oh. So he, he didn't see him. It really looks like he didn't see him. Okay. Well, that was the battle between the two human pilots. And uh, the one who is still there can now concentrate on other things. I mean, rivaling with, uh, against the human pilots is, is one thing, but um, the tactical commander has, of course, to keep an eye on uh, what's going on. <laughs> and um, ma sometimes I could imagine that in one or, or another um, DCZ battle, it's not such a good thing to let you bait. Uh, into an air fight while uh, the tactical commander said you should do other things. Um, no. Uh, Fox of the Volp uh, just asked if the mod will base on only WW2 and Korea. Um, it's it's not... Well, it's, it's more an app like uh, than an and mod it's a web application which generates missions um, depending on the state of the of the game on that web application on that risk clone game and uh, there are research lanes inside this game so you build science buildings to produce research research points and with that research points you can uh, acquire new technology so you start in the normal game in in 1942 and can reach up to 2005 A10Cs. So no, it's not based only on WW2 or Korea. It's uh, It actually has every unit uh, in it which is accessible in DCS. Yeah, as Lenny Go says, um, it's a uh, round-based game, and uh, if a battle occurs between uh, two conflict zones, like two zones on a risk-like game, then n not dices are, are thrown. Instead, you play that battle out in in DCS. That's how it works. It looks like uh, Crips is currently trying to hunt uh, MiG-15s with his P-51, which is probably <laughs> interesting uh, as well. And there, Crips is attacking the MiG-15. <laughs> An interesting fight between uh, a Warbird and a first-generation fighter. And, I mean, uh, the Warbird is piloted by a human player, so it could work out. But it's not easy, as we can see. Uh, even Crips has problems to get a a solid hit right now. Even with these uh, dump maneuvers of the MiG-15.
So while he is hunting the mid 15, let's let's just have a look how the ground battle is occurring right now. Oh, um, actually, interesting. Last time we tried this battle, um, the blue side easily destroyed the red side in in terms of air battle. But this time, some of the red airplanes still in the game. Oh, that one looks like he has he's been stuck. Yeah, okay. Again, someone who is stuck. They are still driving, okay. They are still driving. They are still driving. And we have even troop transport. Um, again, as I said, uh, these troops are really transporting soldiers right now. And up to the maximum of that kind of unit. And as far as I know, I think the Blitz... Uh, could transport up to 12 soldiers. I'm, I'm not certain right now, but I think I have researched it in that way and I have programmed it to the database it like that. Oh, what is he doing now? Ah, Spartan gave him a new order. I see, okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Fox the uh, uh, Volp. Um, you have to see that it's quite, 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 really, really early. So I keep um, the participants in a very small um, range. I already uh, <laughs> somewhat offended an, an German colleague, uh, a German streamer, uh, <laughs> because... Um, I have so many times to say, um, yeah, it's it's nice to have uh, new pilots uh, to test uh, these games, but it's so early quite uh, right now, so um, we can't have get them all um, playing with us in this stage of the game, and it looks like it just crashed because everything halted. Oh, oh, that's not good. Ah, okay. I see um, Crips is, is trying to attack a lot of enemy planes. We have MiG-15 and one, 190, 109 and another 109. So that's quite a lot of enemy AI units here. <laughs> yeah, it will be finished in two weeks. Everything in two weeks. Many thanks, uh, Fox the Volp. I, I really appreciate it that you uh, find the idea great. At, at some time, we will certainly um, expand the amount of uh, testing gamers. And I will uh, write it in the appropriate thread, so um, if you want to participate in the internal tests, uh, you can say so in the thread uh, when I when we are searching for for more players but keep in mind uh, testing and playing are two completely different things um, the guys in the internal test um, sometimes have to um, sit with me here for hours and I'm coding something 
and testing something and something doesn't work out and we have to test it again and again and again and testing software is quite not so much fun than playing software keep that in mind oh, okay some big 15 shot more f86 so Jorgen is literally losing losing some um, of his planes. So this time it's not so good for the <laughs> for the blue side. Yeah, um, Fox, I will come back to the um, um, to the su suggestion for sure. I really appreciate the help. I only have to, um, if I come to the, the, to the point where I have to expand with more uh, pilots, I have to, of course, organize and orchestrate things and uh, some time will, will uh, go by, but um, as I said, I will announce it in the thread and um, you just have to say, okay, we, we want to participate or I will participate uh, depending on how many I'm searching f uh, at that um, time. And yeah, then I will give you the access to the Discord for the internal testing team, for sure. Oh, I think uh, Crips is now disengaging. Probably because he gets low on fuel, I don't know. But that could be the reason. Interesting. The AI is still trying to engage Crips in his P-51. It's not an even battle for sure. Even against the AI, it's probably somewhat complicated to shoot down a first-generation fighter with a warbird. Oh, okay. That one got stuck too. It's really it's a problem, an annoying problem, for sure. We have to to uh, make some tests to to find out um, how we can prevent this. I mean, um, the current implementation seems not to have um, get the on-road waypoints into the merged file. So all points were off-road. So he had to place in the combined arms interface uh, the points from the beginning. I already know that you can help them a little bit um, not to get stuck by placing um, the waypoints in a place where they don't have to uh, drive a curve too close to the bridge entrance. So if you don't place uh, like here and then here and then go over the bridge, but place here and directly go over the bridge in one straight line and then place the next waypoint, that sometimes helps to not got, get stuck. So um, I hope that these tanks don't get the same problem. So we actually see some tank engagement they are the first two tanks of the defender side, which are defending this entrance here, which leads 
to that uh, DCS zone where the blue player has to put his troops into it. <laughs> oh! Crips got shot down by the MiG-15. So both human player are now out of the game. I see. You have to, um, an another thing is um, the dynamic link library, which uh, gets um, um, installed in or, or hooked into DCS. Uh, get all the information out which is necessary for DCZ. So you even have a file where you can um, look quite many information of the outcome of the of the battle, like how much fuel was consumed by one plane, how much meters were driven by one ground force, how every uh, single hit. So you can uh, see uh, how many bullets one has taken for an example so yeah right now we have to wait a bit because it takes some time from the um, bordering conflict zone to enter the conflict zone the attacker is trying to attack Especially with tanks, uh, which are not so <laughs> uh -oh. so fast. Yeah, that's ah, uh, that's really a problem here. And I think the guy who got stuck is the leader, so the other guy will now stop. So if uh, Eagle Dynamics would um, get this, these things fixed, that, that literally can't happen. That would be uh, a nice thing for, for my risk-like game, for sure. Okay, at least that guy made it. <laughs> I mean, uh, getting defeated by too many AI units being stuck to whatever place is certainly not nice thing okay that is uh, very short a very short entrance so he could probably get stuck there too oh that is odd it looks like the bridge is going under the actual terrain and even, oh, it was a bridge for a river, but the river is now, oh gosh, I hope that works out. Ah, uh, but the Tiger 2 doesn't get, <laughs> get stopped by anything. He's just driving through it. What is he doing there? I see uh, Spartan gave him a new order, so he's literally driving back to the to that point now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, this game has for sure additionally a lot of um, um, micromanagement. So it could probably be a good idea, be a good idea to not only um, get additional human players for 
uh, human pilots for the for the um, aircraft, but probably even have additional tactical commanders to helping you out win your battle. But okay, at least uh, these two guys are now under its way. Some red aircrafts still in the in the air. Uh, on Sochi Art, I see no one of the blue aircrafts have returned. It looks like uh, the blue player lost all his aircrafts here. Could be that some are still underway. Be ah, no, no, no. He let uh, the the Vaziani aircrafts return because well, the air battle is more or less over. Well, with the exception of the Spitfire, I see. Ah. That is zero, that is one. Hmm, interesting. But that one was ordered to return for sure. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Fox the Wolf. Nice that you have visited my stream and have a great day. I see uh, some of the blue forces are still under, under its way. So it's really sad that so many um, AI ground forces got stuck. And because of the grouping in DCS, if the leader gets stuck, the other guy gets stuck as well. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Somewhere <laughs> in the open, uh, Jogon holds some of his uh, troop transporters, probably loaded with troops. Uh, maybe, I don't know why. It's even some distance to the zones. Hmm. He has for sure his reasons, I think. Let's get them a little bit closer to the um, to the zone. Maybe that was a problem why he just counted fourteen soldiers there. One DCS zone. Um, which counts the troops is 500 meters. So maybe the height is the problem here, I don't know. But yeah, let them, let them move a little bit closer as a game master, just to be sure that this is not the problem. Hmm. He still counts less troops than he should count. Don't know what, what's the matter with these guys. Have to check the program. Yeah, 
more things which have to be programmed on my side or corrected on my side. <laughs> So it will still take some time after the tanks reach the mine battles, so we get a little bit more action. And let's have a look. Uh, Jorgon has here a Cromwell, and I think the guy behind him is actually an M4 Sherman Firefly. Yeah, okay. So these two tanks are <laughs> watching the entrance. I, don't, I mean, these two tanks have little chance against the German tanks, especially if they are even outnumbering those two guys. So <laughs> that will be a one-sided battle for sure. But then they still have some distance. Well, here is the first zone he could bring his um, his uh, troops into it. Ah, I see, and one of the um, aircrafts made it back. And P-51, which got ah, quite hit by the other AI, probably. I see, um, Yogon ordered some troop transport to move ah, into one of the zones. Mm -hmm, okay. And uh, as you can see, the, the message we have just given, but now um, we have 10 a.m. So it's only one further hour to play. Oh, and uh, he's ordering some of his Shermans back from the buildings, back from the places where he, they were defending these buildings, uh, to the, let's say, entrance of the battle. Ah, yes. And uh, Spartan has now ordered 190s and 109. To have a look at uh, th that the zone where probably are some soldiers inside, which is of course a valid strategy. There's a MiG-15 which got quite a beating. Don't know if they are trying to attack. Ah, it's trying to give the order, but. Uh, there's still some problems, it looks like. <laughs> Secret tactics, yes, <laughs> for sure.
Yeah, it looks like he still has got some problems to get an attack order onto Zeus to tanks. Whatever that is. But even so many tanks uh, or troop transport or whatever got stuck, um, some are still driving to the front a little bit slowly actually. I think he's waiting for the other guys. I see. Okay. Typical AI behavement. They keep themselves to a group. So if some guys getting late, the leader is mostly waiting for the other ones. And there some of the troop transports are transporters coming should be uh, 24 guys actually yeah 2549 is that is this uh, troop transporter I think oh no it's uh, group 1905 interesting okay oh uh, they can uh, transport 24 guys but have only loaded 12. I see. Okay. So much for that. So uh, Jürgen still had some aircrafts flying from um, Vassiani into the battle and they are somewhat, yeah, they are somewhat close right now, getting closer and closer to the actual battle. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how many, how much of fuel uh, these are. Uh, aircrafts on the red side still have left because um, they had quite a distance to fly as well and uh, are patrolling the airspace here since some time so yeah the order was given to fly lower, that worked, but it doesn't look like uh, he, he accepts the command to attack the ground forces. Maybe he's out of ammo, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not so easy to check uh, the ammo of an AI unit just from the combined arm slot. But he doesn't look like he's interested in attacking those ground forces. So yes, what is else going on? Spartan is driving now a northern route with these guys. Okay, probably to intercept these two. Sh I think it was uh, Shermans, yeah, right. So we get finally some ground battle here going on.
Oh, I see. Uh, that is an. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know the, the right word right now. But uh, that is definitely a problem in DCS. Probably as well, like the bridges, so he could get his tanks stuck here in the entrance of this tunnel. There we go. <laughs> tunnel, of course. Uh, yeah, maybe he will give them the command to drive another way. We will have to see. But yeah, there we get, get a Jagdpanzer V and I think that is a Jagdpanzer. Yeah, Jagdpanzer G getting into the position, intercepting the two Shermans. Okay, that attacking order uh, was succeedingly given. So let's see what the AI is making out of it. Now you can see these Shermans in the distance already. Let's switch to the other guy. He has a better sight. And the Shermans are shooting. Okay. Well. Let's see if the Jagdpanzer and Jagdpanzer will shoot back. Ah, there we go. Yeah, and uh, as it is like with uh, German technology here, yeah, one shot, one kill. <laughs> so I think they are both... Oh no, one is still alive, but now he's literally stuck again. So he's the Sherman is Firefly shooting back. Switching back the position. <laughs> Shermer tanks of P. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Huh. It looks like he uh, he dropped the attacking bef uh, order because one of the guys already dead, and it looks like both guys are dead now. I see. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Both Germans are history. And the Jagdpanzer and Jagdpanzer already got new order. Order to drive back, probably. Oh no, he just repositioned the tank. I think uh, Spartan is trying to see if he really has finished both tanks. Okay, but uh, let's have a look. These tanks are still parking there or waiting. Okay, troop transport, which are driving over the bridge, and it looks like they're good. This time they will make it. Which is quite nice.
Uh, okay, we have 10.13, so it's uh, 47 minutes time. Not so much time if you if you see how slowly the attack into the conflict zone is happening. <laughs> But that is, uh, that is uh, of course, one of the things we try out and, of course, to find out um, what is the best maximum time for a conflict between two conflict zones. Uh. <laughs> yeah, let's start some dramatic, intense music. And uh, what is a good balance for both players? in terms of maximum time. So currently it's two hours and I thought two hours would, would be a good um, initial uh, time frame, but maybe it is not. We have to see. And still I think um, if uh, Eagle Dynamics uh, polish some of the quirks out of the uh, ground forces, like getting stuck and driving most of the time far slower than they actually could drive, and then, and then I think it it gets a pretty cool and viable battle. Okay, uh, he hasn't given them new orders, so I think he is waiting for some of the uh, troop transporters which are following. So he has two groups of troop transporters still in the game, as we can see in the F10 menu, because I'm currently on the red coalition side, coalition side, and uh, he has still 36 troops in the troop transporters. So he has 36 troops in, in the game. And Jogon is trying to get some of his troops into a zone, probably to uh, to test it further. Why only these guys are counted, but not that guys? So every time I check how many troops uh, they are given in the zones, he says uh, the red side has zero soldiers and the blue side has fourteen soldiers in all zones. So that is definitely an arrow here. Ah, uh, yeah. So, the German tanks getting now closer to Holster, where more defender tanks are waiting for the battle to come. Okay, more bridges which have to be driven. I mean, that is literally a game of bridges right now. So many bridges uh, the attacker has to drive over. So many situations where problems inside CCS can occur, unfortunately. But one thing I find uh, very good is um, the performance of my implementation seems to be pretty good. So I don't have such a good machine and I, I host the game. So the server is, is right now on my computer and I'm streaming, uh, doing other stuff uh, in the background. And still there was one 
uh, major stutter. I think it happened when um, Microvex left the server. I'm not sure. It was like 20 seconds uh, being stuck or having a frozen game. But yeah, um, this typical uh, status which uh, happens by collecting troops or deploying troops in other scripts uh, doesn't apply here in these tests. So I'm I'm very glad about that one. <laughs> Spartan really carefully advances step by step okay they are waiting for new orders i think these guys are one of these stuck guys don't know okay oh one is just here in the openness. I don't know if he belongs to one of the uh, groups which got stuck. 2515. Yeah, that is another guy who probably got stuck. Huh. Oh, he, he drove himself into the a building. Ah, stupid, stupid. Yeah. Okay. So, unfortunately, some of the units from website can't any longer participate in the battle. These guys are still driving uphill. <laughs> Crossroads. And yeah, now we have the P-51s from Vatsani arriving finally the battlefield. So I think they are as well equipped with uh, not with rockets, okay. Okay, by that distance it makes sense uh, to equip them else in, in, a, in another fashion, for sure. Um, but maybe uh, the AI will even attack the tanks with uh, their main gun. But I highly doubt that this will <laughs> have impact on the tanks. So the troop transport, of course, is completely another thing. If the P-51s are attacking the troop transport of Spartans, the two troop transport groups which are left, then uh, Spartan would lose all his troops. And that would be it for, for him, for his um, goal to capture the conflict zone. There's... Oh, I see. There's battle ongoing i think these guys are attacking now yeah so we have some long distance shootout between the german tanks and the the shermans and it already looks like there was a nearby impact to the german tanks but it literally scratched only the guys <laughs> Ouch, that was close. And he literally got not damage. <laughs> but the Shermans got some damage here. Yeah. Oh. Okay, the distance is even There's even quite some distance for the for the German shells, so probably they don't make the same damage than they would do in a more closer combat. 
And the accuracy of um, ground forces set to average is, of course, well, not so good. <laughs> it could take quite some time after uh, these tanks got killed by each other. But I really like the new impact uh, visualization and the new impact implementation of uh, it. looks awesome. Oh, and that was all, all addition, uh, also a more closer impact. So yeah, now they took some beating. A direct hit would of course uh, finish them off. For sure, that looked really direct, more or less. Oh, okay, it was not completely direct, but he's almost finished. This is for sure an uh, viewpoint which is rarely seen in DCS streams. <laughs> I wonder what will happen first, if the tanks get out of ammo or the other side gets destroyed, well, one of the, of the side. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit more. And we have uh, some air battle going on again. So these planes which circled for a very long time over the battlefield were now attacked by these P-51s and it looks like they are already... yeah. Those who are left are now trying to get home. But let's get back to the engagement here. Okay, it's, it looks like the, the, the Cromwell has stopped engaging the German tanks for whatever reason. Yeah, it really has uh, the feel of artillery and not uh, tanks shooting each other. <laughs> it's, it's quite inaccurate. <laughs> uh, and there goes. I think it was the uh, the, the the Sherman and. Uh, no, it was a crumble. The, the Sherman is still there. Okay. One got destroyed. Destroyed by a Panther G. Oh, that was quite close too. Yeah, now he's in the... In the red area. Uh-huh. Looks like they are lo reloading now. Oh, no. Still shooting. Okay. Briss. Machine gun? Quite interesting. Oh my, oh my. Oh, 
Oh, they are shooting now with um, AP munition. That could be. I don't know. Have to see. Yeah, it's it's still um, Panzer grenade thirty nine. Okay, but it's the it's armor piercing, not high explosive anymore. So to uh, show you that as well, um, or to give you um, how it looks like, and an idea. Everything which happened in the game is, is locked, and you can see this if I activate uh, the screen here. So you literally see how they are shooting currently. The QF-17 high explosive is from the um, uh, from the Sherman, and the Panzer Grenade 3942 is um, from the German tank. Okay. 90 minutes are already over. They have 30 minutes left. So I don't think that um, actually Spartan will, will get this conflict zone. But he nevertheless had made quite some damage to the units from Jurgen. like direct hits but the Sherman is still standing there interesting really interesting <laughs> there we go that was the final direct hit and the Sherman is gone but one of his tanks, the Jagdpanzer IV, got quite a beating. Okay. Oh, are they really driving? Yeah, they are driving through the tunnel and it looks like it works. Let's see. So we see two tigers driving through the tunnel at uh, Holster, which is in the near of Sochi Adler. And they are, they, they are coming out. Nice. Okay, this time they don't got stuck at the entrance or somewhere in between. This time it worked. More tanks to the front. <laughs> Oh, but they still to have to drive over a huge bridge. But the bridge looks like it's... Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, Spartan have given them the order to drive left and to the north over a smaller bridge. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. Now he's giving the truck the order to go over the main bridge and the tanks are driving over the little bridge. Hmm. 
Okay. And I see Jorgen is trying to get some of his forces now in a position to defend this DCS zone. Okay. But I don't know if we actually will see that battle as well, because quite some time is already has already passed. Okay, they are still driving crossroads. Now the uh, troops, uh, the troops on spot with the troops are entering the tunnel. Let's see if this works out as well, because well, it looks a little bit awkward, the entrance. Ah. But I think they will, they will be fine. There we go. With 36 kilometers per hour, they're driving through the tunnel. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, activate more dramatic music for the tunnel drivement. <laughs> yeah, and they are underway so we have uh, 23 minutes left and before the game will itself declare the end of the game and uh, count the troops and finishes this battle Bedfords don't get faster. Crossroads there. A little bit slow. 20 km per hour. Okay. There comes Jorgon with uh, two Sherman Fireflies. Driving closer to the front. Of course, um, one way to to get the problem a little bit, um, well, to have a workaround would be if um, the WW two tanks could be uh, driven by the tactical commanders if they. Uh, get the first person uh, interaction view then you could of course prevent get them stuck at, at bridges for sure but uh, yeah it's it's more of a workaround than actual a good thing for a technical commander which has um, to attend to so many things and then driving a tank uh, between all these commands would be uh, a little bit much Okay, 
troop transport seems to have no problems coming over the bridge. And these tanks have already passed that bridge, so this one was as well no problem. And sometimes it's really strange. Uh, some bridges are no problem at all, and other br br uh, bridges uh, that get the whole group being stuck. Yeah. Okay. I made even uh, some experiences on Normandy, and uh, in, on the Normandy map, um, many buildings are so close to each other that uh, the AI can get quite some uh, problems there as well. Twenty minutes to go. So I see the Sherman Fireflies got into the into the desired position. And we have on that side uh, Panzer Kampfwagen 5 Panther Ausführung G and another one. Okay. I don't know if he should get his troop transport so much in the front maybe he should better let them stop here and drive and give them the 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 tanks the opportunity to but then again uh, the time is really short um spartan has now only 18 minutes left to get his troop transport into that position so yeah i don't think he will make it <laughs> In the meantime, I make a little test and deploy the troops inside that uh, these guys to have a look if at least if these troops uh, get counted. 500 meters range, it's like here. So at least they should get past these trees. Oh, and there I get the troop transport transporter attacked by the Sherman Fireflies. Pretty much ouch. <laughs> and there is one of the troop transporters gone. Okay, I should switch to the other one. He's trying to drive, but he's already considered as dying in, in DCS. And he has already been erased from the F-10 map, so he will explode in any second. Ah, 
and there he blowed up. Interesting, and uh, one of these guys here, the Panther G, has destroyed a bow force which was still stationed at the border. Yeah, so let's have a look. Okay, that doesn't got actual. Oh, I think. Um, Two five four nine. Ah, okay. A uh, Spartan drove with the transport group with less soldiers to more to the front. So he literally has not lost a soldier yet. This is engagement. So, in the last minutes, I wanted to test something. I have to switch to Jurgen and um, let him do something for me. It looks like that uh, lead aircraft oh. is doing everything he can. You are all here. Okay. Um, Jurgen, kannst du bitte mal die Gruppe 14716 aus den Befehl zum Ausladen geben? Yep. Erledigt. Super. 15, 1. Nee. What the fuck? Ja, da muss ich echt nochmal gucken, warum die 14 gezählt werden, aber alle anderen nicht. Ja, gute Frage. Ähm, eine Frage. Ja? Sind die eingeladenen Gruppen so quasi fahrzeuggebunden? Nein. Okay, also nur an die Gruppe. Ich habe gerade gesehen, du hast keinen Soldaten verloren. <lacht> ja. Weil das war nämlich genau die, die Gruppe, wo ich nur zwölf Leute drin Genau, genau, genau. Das ist ein LKW beladen. Das meinte ich übrigens auch gerade schon auf dem Stream. Äh, ich gehe nochmal kurz zurück in den anderen Channel. Komme später zu ja. euch zurück, wenn es finished ist. Okay. So, we are back for ourselves, more or less. Ja, um, yeah, I, I don't think that uh, Spartan will now uh, change anything in. The, yeah. 13 minutes, 13 minutes and some seconds. But still, um, s some shootings will happen before that, and maybe one of the uh, fireflies or cromwells get destroyed as well. So that uh, on the uh, risk board, on the DCZ board, uh, Jürgen would lose one or two, one or two tanks in the end. Interesting. P fifty one just sh shot down at one o nine. There's still some air yeah, battles ongoing. Where? Hmm. Wherever that was. Oh, they drove all the way <laughs> to to the airfield of of uh, Spartan, and he. It does it look like he doesn't have placed some triple A, triple A there? <laughs> okay, well, that's certainly a way to destroy enemy units and get them rid of the DCZ board as well, for sure. <laughs> and now the AI is uh, attacking the parking deactivated AI there. <laughs> And, ah, uh, typical 
AI engagement gets destroyed himself by doing so. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, so much for that. But I think the engagement here is starting now. Okay, that Sherman tries to flank. They are in position. We have 10 minutes and some seconds left. He, I, he literally... Ah, no. The line of... Okay. The line of sight is, is not given. <laughs> he has to drive a little bit closer. And there comes the order to, to advance. So I see, in this uh, city, city battle, uh, Jürgen tries to flank the Tigers. Oh. I think a building got hit. Looks like that. Wow! That looked like a direct hit and uh, yeah, that is of no interest for the Panther. Ausführung G. Another quite direct hit. I think it was a uh, um, HE. High explosive. Oh, another hit. That German tank is almost finished. Let's switch to the other one. But nevertheless, uh, the Panther destroyed a Sherman and another Sherman. With their Panzer Grenade 3942. And another Sherman got destroyed. Three Sherman Fireflies. <laughs> well, at least they had some chance. So they, do they made some damage to the Panthers, at least. Whoever is uh, residing in that uh, building, uh, they probably have to build a, a new guard. And now they have to build <laughs> a new house. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not nice to to reside in a house which is in a conflict zone for sure. Why is he not driving a little bit more? Ah. There we go. Now he's he has given him the order. Okay, I see. Um, driving through lamps is uh, is no problem for the German tanks. <laughs> so. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left, and uh, he already destroyed three additional Shermans, and probably he will get the other ones standing there as well. For, for the player uh, who chooses in DCZ the West Side technology, so starting with Allied forces and continuing with NATO forces later on, he has at the beginning the disadvantagement of having yeah one one could say shitty tanks against one could say superior tanks i uh once tried as a player the blue side technology and uh, i had uh, some shermans and uh, spartan all only had one tiger but that one tiger destroyed literally all my shermans so um as a blue side technology player, you really have to put that into consideration. I see. Um, they are now hiding there, more or less. So it's like, what's the view from, from their side? They are placed in... Ah, the building is already destroyed, so now they can shoot through that building okay interesting
with the accuracy of uh, average skill. It can take some time until uh, tanks are finishing themselves. Oh, that was another direct hit to the German tank and he's smoking, uh, but still not damaged to the point he, he will get destroyed. So uh, Spartan is now driving a more direct course. Let's see if that works out for him. Oh no, that, that one, one Panther G got destroyed by the Germans. Sherman Fireflies now. Okay. There we have a Jagdpanzer 4. Oh, that was pretty close too, but didn't make any damage properly. Yeah, okay. There we go! Another Panther G got destroyed by a Cromwell 4 with a direct hit on the right side of the view. Impressive. The last four minutes. Let's see if he finish the last guys. <laughs> I see Jorgon is really trying to... Oh, what is he doing? Is he trying to, to flank or...? <laughs> yeah, he, he really tries to play a cat and mouse with him. think he tries to preserve oh there got the uh one of the shermans directed so it's three minutes left I literally never watched such lengthy tank battles, especially not from World War II tanks inside DCS. It's, uh, it's a new thing for me too. And uh, Tiger One destroyed the Sherman, probably from, from a little bit more away. So he lost another Sherman. And there goes the Cromwell. So yeah, Spartan got the last two one. He, he literally can or can, could kill but uh, it's less than two minutes left and uh, I don't think that these troop transporter will, uh, um, will arrive the zone number four in time so the zones have uh, 500 meters which is yeah which ends here literally so they have to drive at least at to that to that point and uh, quickly deploy their troops and yeah i don't i don't think i don't see this happen in one minute and 50 seconds <laughs> and of course a typical dcs thing uh, he gets <sighs> gets slowed by buildings nearby so no, that's definitely a no-go. Nevertheless, um, this will then finally finish my stream. 
I hope you enjoyed some board. This is a DCS battle generated from DCZ from two guys. Um, at the start of the stream, you st still can see um, how the setup was, how the uh, DCZ board uh, looked like, and uh, what uh, how the planning mission looked like, and how the resulting final battle mission looked like. Um, I will upload this in, in YouTube, even with all the problems which uh, were given there. Uh, if you want to see it there again. So that is the ending, the end, and uh, the conflict zone resides in the hand of the defender, of course. And yeah, that's literally it. The mission is over. So yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, battle to some extent, and I hope to see you soon. Um, to our, well, I hope we, we come to a, a streaming schedule back. I, I can't promise anything. So many things are has to be uh, attended to right now. But nevertheless, I, I hope to see you all again. And I wish you a good morning, a good day, a good afternoon, a good evening, or a good night, wherever you are. Have a great day. Goodbye.